video game maps keep getting bigger every year and I'm guilty of that as well because I'm building a game where you play on a planet that is at a one-to-one -one scale with Earth. And I share that a lot when making videos and people always comment like oh but don't you know about this game that also has a planetary scale or, or this other game that's way bigger and my answer to them is always no they're not. It's not because you have a game map that is a ball that you necessarily have a planetary scale. For that we really need to look at the size of that ball. So that's what I did. I checked six games that are considered to have huge maps and checked how big those maps actually are compared to planet Earth. And a few of the popular names might surprise you. First of all, disclaimer, there is a huge difference between the size of a game and the content of a game. I could easily make an infinite game, but if there's an infinite amount of nothingness, there's really no point in it being infinite. And it's the same way the other way around. A map might be rather small, but if it's filled with good content, you could easily spend hours in it. So having a small map is not necessarily a bad thing. I guess what I'm trying to say is that size doesn't always matter, but this video is a dick measuring contest. So let's go. Also, I have a lot of respect for all these developers, a lot of these games I play myself and absolutely love, but I still think I have the biggest one. The first one, for shits and giggles, as a little planet cleanser for our mental maps, has to be Spore. I think many of us grew up with this game as a first game you play on a planet. I still remember fondly watching your world expand as you evolve your creature. That really felt huge to me. So. It kind of hurts to see it on the world map and how tiny those floating balls actually were. It's no wonder really when you can see a city towering out from space. These balls are estimated to have a diameter of 830 meters, which would make their surface area about 2.1, 2.2 square kilometers. That's around the size of a small village in real life. On number 5 is a game that also gets mentioned quite often, and that's RimWorld. I love this game, it gave me a lot of inspiration for the features I'm building in my game, but when it comes to map size, I consider what they do cheating. You cannot have thousand small maps, show them on a ball and call that one planet. That's just a thousand small maps. But okay, I'll go along with it. Even if you stitch all these maps together into one large planet, it is still estimated to be around 10,000 square kilometers. That's very big for sure, but by far a planet. You can compare it with the size of Jamaica or Puerto Rico. Next on the list is No Man's Sky at number 4. A very big game with over 18 quintillion procedurally generated planets. I'm not even gonna try to understand how many that is. And what's especially impressive is that these planets have unique biomes and plant and animal life. But how big are those planets actually? I guess they wanted to make them explorable rather than realistic because these planets are about 23 square kilometers in size. Which gets close to countries like Djibouti or North Macedonia. Hold on to your horses because now we're gonna make quite a jump in map size, but first an honorable mention. Starfield is also one of those popular names in the planetary genre, but just like RimWorld they use loading screens to go from place to place even on the same planet. That's not one planetary map, that's multiple maps stitched together. But even ignoring that fact again, planets in Starfields are around 300,000 square kilometers in size. This makes their planets comparable with countries like the Philippines, Italy or Poland. But I have to admit, this game was a hard one to get any numbers for, so it might be off. In second place we have Kerbal Space Program. First of all, why doesn't that get mentioned as often? Because that game came out like 10 years ago, but really has huge planetary maps. Its largest solid planet seems to be Eve, which is also estimated to be around 4.5 million square kilometers, which lands them in between the size of India and Australia. But the planets in Kerbal Space Program are a lot more empty, with less interesting features on them. I can only wonder what exploring these planets in Kerbal Space Program 2 must be like. The game that sits on the number one spot and really comes close to having actually planet-sized planets is Star Citizen. Truly impressive game, both in visuals and content. The developers chose to scale the planets to one tenth of their size. So a planet with a canonical diameter of 1000 kilometers will have a diameter in-game of 100 kilometers. 
But because the surface area is exponential, dividing your diameter by 10 means dividing your surface area by 100. So that actually makes a big difference. The biggest planet you can land on seems to be Hurston. And considering its size and scale, the walkable area is around 12 million square kilometers. By far the biggest planet in any popular game currently. But is it planet big or just big big? When you compare it to countries, you can see that it's slightly bigger than Canada, the USA or China, but still smaller than Antarctica. Walking that area on foot is insane. It's a good thing they have fancy spaceships to get around. I'm sure they could make their planets bigger, but it must have been a conscious decision of the developers to make them feel huge while still being practical to navigate. I hope you now see that not all video game planets are created equal, and if I just ignore a few games, I can proudly say that I have the biggest. <laughs>